So in 2009, I got a call from casting to work as a prop car driver on the movie Grown Ups. So casting calls me and um, basically what they do is they ask you if you're available to work and then they also say, uh, can you use your car? And if you've marked yourself as someone who's willing to bring your car to set, you're marked as a potential prop car driver. Prop car drivers, uh, Hollywood Union prop car drivers get paid more than uh, a background. So you get paid more for bringing your car. And I would say it's a lot more fun uh, sometimes, depending on the set. On this particular shoot, uh, we were shooting the funeral scene in front of the church. So they needed all black cars. And I had a black car at the time, so I got to be a prop car driver for the funeral scene. And what happens is you basically get to go to the, you show up to set and they check you in and they ask you where your car is and then they tell you to park your car in a certain location. And then they tell you to stand around all the other prop car drivers. So usually there will be like, you know, a little group of us and Basically what it is is a group of us are Hollywood small fry who usually do background stand-in or prop car driving. And so on this particular day, that's what we were doing. It can be nice to be a prop car driver because if it's a warm day or a cold day, you're outside, you're actually in your car, so it's a lot more comfortable and you can um, expense all the gas and everything for that day, uh, you know, on your taxes as a write-off. So um, not that I'm giving anybody tax advice or anything like that, but... <laughs> And usually you get to relax a little bit by craft service. Now on this particular set, um, there was a lot going on that day. A lot of people around. All the stars were there. So they had basically this uh, little courtyard area cordoned off right outside the church where they were doing some scenes. But that also happened to be like their big fry staging area. And then in the parking lot, they had large, big white tents set up for, craft, for, uh, for meals. And I mentioned before on Happy Madison Films, I had also worked on Paul Blart and the craft service and the meals that they provide to their Hollywood small fry are amazing. Um, really nice meals, like like the kind of meal you would get, you went to like someone's nice wedding, like a, a nice big buffet, like all the fixings, multiple choices, desserts, coffee, tea, the whole thing. It was great. Now, what, what does a prop car driver do? Well, a prop car driver is basically the people that you see in the background driving the cars. <laughs> and, you know, I know it looks real and all, but actually every time you see somebody walking down the street in a movie or a TV show, chances are it's a prop car driver. And they have to do that because they have to control every single aspect of the scene 100%. So for this scene... They gathered us together and the big fry are exiting the church. And so there was a big crane set up with a camera and the camera was going to swing up and get give you a nice big overview of the church and everybody kind of driving in. And there was a macaroni shape. There was like a drive, like a circular drive in front of the church. Beautiful New England church. And... They said, okay, prop car drivers, prop car drivers, everybody line up and we're going to position you in front of the church. So basically it was going to be the services had just gotten out and we were a bunch of black cars and we we're going to be pulling into the circular drive and picking up people coming out of the church. And some of the people coming out of the church were big fry. And so that was going to be the scene. That was it. Literally 30 seconds of film took hours to, to do. So the scene was simply on action. You're going to see background action and background are going to leave the church and walk into the church, exit the church, walk around and then cars action. And then those cars are going to start driving and then action and then big fry are going to leave. So usually there's, so sometimes on a set you'll see two or three actions before the big fry action. So that was kind of what happened here. And AD comes over. Sometimes they give you a walkie-talkie and put that in your car so you can kind of figure out what's going on. Now, if you're a prop car driver and you're on the street following a movie camera car, then you definitely have a walkie-talkie in your car. 
Um, and you might even have an AD in your car uh, in the back seat, hunched down, giving you instructions. But on this set, uh, it was just us pulling into the circular drive and then stopping. So they go, background, go. All the people go. Cars, go. Action. And my car, I hit the accelerator and I go into the circular drive. And I stop. And then they go, cut. Reset. And the AD takes his finger and does a little whirlpool symbol. Reset. And then all of us prop car drivers throw our cars in reverse and we back up. Kind of like somebody hit the pause button and then when you're watching Amazon Prime, you hit the pause button and then you hit the little rewind button and you go back like five seconds. That's basically what happened. We reset. So we drive in, then we hit the reverse and we go back out to where we were, back to one. It's called back to one. Reset, back to one. So we go back to one and the big fry go back into the church and everybody does the scene over and over and over, over again. And background action. And cars action. And action. It's basically <laughs> how it was. And cut, reset, back up. So that happened for about several hours. And it was actually pretty sunny that day. Very nice day, good weather. One of the things I like about prop car driving again is that you don't have to do all the things that the other background do. They were using background. We were used as background in addition, you know, later on that day because there were a lot of other stuff, but it's just more comfortable um, hanging out and chilling in your car, <laughs> listening to the radio, you know, watching the big fry from your car. And, uh, and then of course, what's really nice is the crew is, is really nice to you. They're, they're just, they're, they're so much more chummier. I don't know why it's a weird hi Hollywood hierarchy that goes on. It's like, if you're put to work on a set, somehow that differentiates you from being just a standard background. And I understand that, but at the same time, it's like, you know, <laughs> you know, the value of a human being doesn't go up just because I brought my car to set, you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's how people are, you know, that all of a sudden they're like, you know, they're, they're so much nicer to you. But anywho, um, give you some takeaways about what went on that day. Uh, the after the funeral scene, we were, we parked our cars and what'll happen is if you're not driving your car as a prop car driver, what they'll do is the, after they're done with you driving it, then they'll park it behind some other principles. And so that actually happened too. So my car is in the background for a couple of scenes, just parked there. And of course I'm getting paid for that too, uh, which is nice. But yeah, so my car was featured in, uh, a couple scenes and you know the big fryer acting and I can see my car in the background a lot of scenes uh, were filmed that day including a scene with Selma Hayek so when we were uh, done driving we hung out in this corral in this area on the on the lawn where all the chairs and craft service was uh, next to this courtyard area and the next scene to be done was with Selma Hayek and some kind some woman that was breastfeeding her son and Chris Rock and they were all there and my first impressions of Selma Hayek were that she was very they were all very it was like all of the big fry showed up to set in character you know what I mean like Selma Hayek was very Selma Hayek-y she was very aloof very sexy very you know everything that you would assume Selma Hayek to be, she was. And she had her assistant there and she was in this sort of black tight suit with a very dramatic uh, black hat um, that I actually liked a lot. I liked her hat. Uh, very memorable hat. And they filmed that scene for a while. We all sort of stood around and watched. It's interesting to watch the, the Big Fry work. They can work with a whole lot of small fry sometimes off to the side watching them although they we weren't watching them closely we were like you know most of the background were cordoned away uh me and a handful of other people were a little bit closer so but anyway um but yeah they're working outside they they're aware that they're being watched by a whole bunch of people and they were all pretty cool as cucumbers they were pretty you know they were pretty chill. Um, all the big fry were in a good mood. 
even though Selma was aloof, be, you know, being very Selma-y, um, everyone was in, it was in, it was in a good mood. Um, I saw Chris Rock there. He was standing off to the side talking to uh, Rob Schneider. It seemed that Rob Schneider was extremely popular amongst all the big fry. They all sort of like huddled around Rob Schneider and like were laughing and talking with him and that made me smile because I've always been a big fan of, I mean, I'm nobody's fan anymore, but I've always sort of followed uh, Rob Schneider, thought he was another interesting character. And I always thought that he had way more talent than some of these other people that he co-stars with. Um, there are certain stars that I follow their careers and I feel like they're really talented, you know, more talented than other people. And I feel like these are kind of the people that, if I were to focus a little bit more on, perhaps I would see that maybe he's playing some other people as well. So I don't know if Rob Schneider is a host actor or if he's actually someone else like Corky Nemec maybe. And uh, this is just sort of a character. I've, of I've often thought that Corky Nemec and Rob Schneider were one and the same person, but I'm not sure. I'm not 100% sure. Um, and I'm, I like both of them. I like both of their work a lot. And they're both talented comedians. So who knows, you know, I wasn't, I'm not going to do a video on it because I don't know for sure. But uh, Rob Schneider was there and he was very personable and very friendly and very happy go lucky. And um, yeah, and it was just nice to see that he wasn't some, you know, weirdo monster of course he could be weirdo monster <laughs> he could be and if you're listening to this Rob don't get offended because I just said that you know I was I love your work so <laughs> but anyway um I stood around and I I really watched how they interacted with each other and they were all in a very good mood David Spade was there acting like a fraternity brother I mean like I said they kind of act like they showed up to set in character, you know what I mean? Like Chris Rock was there and he was being very Chris Rock, you know, and they were all sort of getting along and they were all like acting like fraternity brothers. And um, that was nice to see. But at the same time, you kind of wonder, you know, looking back on it, you're like, it confirms that I feel like they, they get dressed up in their character and then they show up to set in character. And then that character gets into character again uh, for world stage level two, which is the actor they're playing in the movie. So that's just my theory, but who else did I see? Um, oh yeah, of course, Adam Sandler. And, uh, he was the big boss on set and he was walking around and I spent a lot of time just watching them sort of just hang out and it was very, very normal. And so what I would have to report on that is that, um, when you're in close proximity to these people, and these people are no exception. I've met many, many others and, see, and been clo in close proximity with many other Big, fi big Fry. The, the trend and the, the commonality of it is that you know, it's very normal. Like, they act very normal. Like, there was nothing weird or wrong. And uh, David Spade was acting like he was on vacation. I mean, the guy always acts like he's on vacation somewhere, right? <laughs> it's like what, life is just one big vacation for this guy. Uh, not a lot of problems at all, no. I mean, there were a couple instances where she had to do things over again. The director wasn't particularly satisfied, but it wasn't uh, nothing dramatic, anything like that. Um, they all were professionals, and they all knew their lines. I didn't see anybody looking at scripts. That's one thing I was going to mention, and I was going to do a future video on how... I, yeah... It's interesting. I, I, I don't know about, you know, this whole thing with like coming to set and knowing every single line by heart. I, I guess that is that is true for theater, theatrical actors. So it is possible. Um, I just would expect them to have looked at their sides a little bit more. So that was my experience on Grown Ups.